Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we haven't done one of these NHL lineup build process videos in a while, and I figured uh, since the playoffs are starting, we'll put one up here. And this could be the last one, I'm not sure, because again, I don't want these to be about just predicting what's going to happen on this slate, but more kind of just to show you a process that you come back and repeat. And I just feel as though it's important to, when you're going to do an evergreen type video or a, a process type video, that it is with a particular slate in mind. Um, so again, my idea is to not make this about just keep coming back every day and I'll show you who you like, but it's more come back every once in a while to see what a good process looks like, I suppose. Now, again, you are gonna have to subscribe to True DFS or a site like it for, you know, get the projections and tools and things like that to make all this work. But this is gonna be really focusing on how to use those tools, projections or whatever to help build lineup. So. First thing I'd like to do is, is get a sense for what the slate looks like with respect to the, the layout. So you have a 7 and a 7.30 game, and then you have a 9.30 and a 10. And that is important because it does provide this opportunity to late swap. Um, you know, a real big gap here to figure out what the hell's going on in case you need to either become more aggressive in the late games or to become more conservative in the late games depending on how you're doing early and how everybody else is doing early. The other thing I want to look at are what the implied totals are for this game. And I it doesn't look like I'm getting it. Where what happened to my team totals? Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm getting a team total for any of these games, or maybe I'm just not showing it correctly. So we're not going to be able to see in advance who we think we're going to like. We're going to have to figure out who we actually are. So the way we do that is let's first pull up my projection sheet, which again is available on TrueDFS. But for now, we're just going to show it to you. And we're rating these guys again based on our, our usual metrics, you know, uh, fantasy points, points per dollar, but also the sheets value score, which is my own kind of you know, combination of points per dollar and, and fantasy points. And again, I just like to take an overall look and see what I and see what I see. And, and we'll get to that in a minute. What we're trying to find again are, you know, players that project well that are on the same team or more, more specifically on the same line because of the way correlation works in, in hockey. And we also look for kind of standout value. So like the first thing I notice is that this dancing hanging is is extremely, you know rates extremely well he's 3300 and he's going to be owned but i mean he, he makes a lot of a lot of things work and then the other thing i'll notice is that this other one miro heskin is, is 4700 and max domi is 3300 so you do have some value that you can end up probably playing wherever you want in your other stack so if you're worried about playing a stack which is too expensive i wouldn't worry too much because you have these value pieces Next thing I look at is again, you know, is there, there's a cluster, you know, so I see Matthews up here and then I do see Tavares and Domi, but they're not really on that same line. So it's not quite as, as, as lucrative as some others. Pasternak, I don't see any Boston guys close. Oh, actually there's, there's the Hayden guy. So this is the two man that can kind of start you going and then you fill it in with, you know, lesser like Boston's, but you don't even get that many. You have to go all the way down to here. Play. I mean, it's really not the greatest stack in the world, Boston, either. Uh, Edmonton, you have McDavid, but then Bouchard. So when you're trying to hand build, it becomes a very difficult hand build type slate. That usually you have a situation where everything kind of stands out at you. So you are going to have to, at least I would, look to your Saber Sim and your optimizers to, to build on a slate like this. Now, there are some slates that are not like this, some slates that just kind of all stands out to you, but but today it's just not. So let's do that. Let's pull up SaberSim. And first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna upload our projections to replace what's was there before him. Exclude our list of players so you don't get any issues there. And let's build 50 lineups because I built, actually we're going to build 5,000 lineups, but I played 50 entries into the, you know, the MME kind of lottery tournament. So let's make sure that, what's wrong with my, 
keyboard. On the keyboard. And let's see. Build. <laughs> Interesting. And again, for those of you that aren't here for the first time, and the reason we've built 5,000 lineups is because when we, when we tweak afterwards, we want to have a pool of lineups to, to pick from. We don't have to rebuild everything. Now, we might be building too many because, I mean, do you really want the 5,000th lineup to be in, in, the, in the pool of lineups you could pick from regardless of what settings you use? Probably not. We're not going to make too many huge tweaks anyway. But let's see. So the first thing I'd like to notice is what I would get to without making any adjustments or any sims or anything. And I'd be getting, first of all, about 60% Dallas, 45% Toronto, 40 36% Toronto, uh, Boston. But more to the point, let's look at the stack exposures. And you're getting a whole bunch of six-mans, which are just full-on stacks, um, which I like. I actually do like playing those. The next thing you have to kind of think about is whether you want to minimize the amount of like non-traditional stacks you get. So normally I like to either play five twos or, or four threes or six or, or onslaught sixes and everything else I don't like, but on a four game slate, it's not as important. So we're going to X out some of these, but not all of them. So we'll X out the three, three twos, three, two twos, three, two twos. We're going to keep in, Maybe the five zeros. Maybe we'll keep in the three three twos. That's actually not too bad. But I don't think I want to play the regular four twos. So let's see what this looks like. Four threes, sixes, five twos, five zeros, three three two. We don't need a two two. A two by two, whatever. And this is what you're getting. Now you could stop here and just kind of kind of rock and just put these in, but Another thing you could do is, is, is to get yourself a little more diverse is to make your min uniques higher, whether it be, you know, require that your lineups have more than one different player per lineup. And that lowers your risk, but also lowers the chances that you hit the, you know, the top lineup. All right, let's, uh, again, well, we'll keep the four two twos, that's fine. So you could certainly enter these right now. But what I want to do is employ the contest sims. So let's first let's first save these to the contests that we have. And I already saved some lineups. Sorry, I don't feel very well today. So we're going to upload those from DraftKings so it has something to put in here. And the first thing I'll do is I'll put right-click contest sims. And we're going to save, we're going to use the field of lineups to compare our lineups to as build two, which is the lineups that we just created. And we're going to do that same thing for the penalty kill. This way we don't rely exclusively on the Saber Sim ownership. And then we click this run contest sims. And when you've done this, I think you have done, I don't want to say the bare minimum, but I, I would say this is the at minimum what you should be doing if you do have access to these types of tools, is to up, upload a good bunch of projections, run some builds, you know, X out the types of stacks you don't want, and then run the contest sims. I think that's at least where you start. And then you see kind of what you have here. So we'll do this drop down under the playoff puck drop, which is the, the lottery. We'll sort by risk adjusted ROI. And I don't even really care who we have. That's the purpose of process, right? So I would X out the four zeros, keep the three, three, twos, keep everything else. Hit apply and then just fire it. Um, and again, I don't really care who we have because 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 that's that's really if you want to be really process over results or process or whatever, is that you'll have faith in your process and not get biased by your exposures. Now again, that might be getting a little too cavalier, but that's what I like to do. So we'll put this in. Second. After pause for a second. Sorry. And then when we do the penalty kill, 
we use a risk adjusted ROI there. We can make sure that we get the right stat type at least. I don't really care of what you know who we get, but as long as I have the right stat type, I've used the right process. Throw that in there, and then we're kind of done. Now again, if you if you're really good and you want to go through. Like here, I already see like these guys are out. I don't know why these guys are out. And I have them somehow. Let's see something. Let me just see if I did this right. I shouldn't have those guys out. Playoff puck drop. Yeah, so I guess we have to just double check to make sure the guys that we have are in. And right now, I could just do this and just replace my players. That makes sense. Um, we probably have to redo these. You know, if I'm getting guys that in my lineups that that were out, you know, what's this one? Perez again? Oh, the goalie's out. Okay. Not be swapped from one lineup. We'll take a look at that. But again, that's not quite as important. Um, so that's, again, the way I would build these lineups. Uh, and for today, listen, I happen to be getting a lot of Dallas, but who cares? This is the way you use the tools. This is the way you use the Sims. This is the way you use your entry editor. And I just have to, have to double check later whether these guys that I have are out. There's kind of late swap for those uh, that are later on. And we go in here. This is not all contests have been filled. Well, what contest do I have here? I have the puck drop, the penalty kill. Let's, let's take another look at this. Let's make sure I'm doing this right. Let's replace these to the puck drop. Why have this not been? Oh, this one hasn't the penalty kill I haven't done yet. Aha. Penalty kill. Okay. I guess this is what the problem was. We never checked this. Yep, and that disappeared. Okay, so we figured it out. All right, uh, that should do it as we put these in our in our contest. We're obviously going to change these uh, at some point now until the end of the day. And I hope you guys learned something. Uh, please check out 2DFS for more content, and I'll probably do some more of these throughout the playoffs. Good luck, everybody.